Welcome back, I'm Harlan, your backyard grill sergeant, here to take your grilling to the next level. Today, I'm going to show you how to make jerky out of venison. Normally, you make jerky out of the back strap of the deer, which is similar to like a tenderloin. It's a long, thin piece of meat, and it's nice to make long, thin cuts for jerky. But today, uh, I'm going to be showing you how to make a ground jerky using a grinder, and one of these um, one of these jerky guns. Uh, the reason we're doing that is because my neighbor brought over this jerky. These are actually some of the uh, most undesirable parts of the deer. This is actually like the, the hip area right here. And uh, most people don't really use that kind of meat. Um, so they typically, a lot of times it gets thrown away, but I'm gonna show you how to use that. So in a way, we're kind of gonna be making a uh, silk purse out of a sow's ear today. First things first, I'm going to actually take it over and rinse it off. I see some deer hair here and some grass bits and things, uh, apparently from when they were uh, dragging the deer out of the woods. So uh, let me do that and then I'll be right back. All right, I got it all rinsed off. And uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and start prepping this meat. And now uh, it's actually like, where do we go from here? Well, actually, believe it or not, it's really not that difficult. You don't have to be any kind of expert uh, butcher on how to do this. You can literally go ahead and just do this. Is a main rule is don't cut yourself with a knife and uh, you know try to keep your hands nice and clean so you're not spreading bacteria all over the place. And those are basically the main rules. So um, the number one thing you want to make sure you do with the meat is to get rid of silver skin. So what is silver skin, you might ask. Most of you probably already know, some of you might not. Uh, what it is, is it's this thin little skin. When you look at the meat here, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and bring you in close so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, look at this right here. See, uh, and this thin little membrane material. Uh, this right here is the number one enemy to any cooking, any uh, barbecue cook. You wanna get, get rid of this stuff uh, because this right here, this is like uh, really tough. Look at that, if I pull on it, it's like, uh, like look at that. So uh, if, that's gonna, if that's in your final product, it's gonna make your final product really tough and hard to chew and uh, nobody wants that. So the easiest way to get uh, rid of it is to actually just take a butter knife and the reason you do a butter knife is because you really don't need to cut anything. You're just sliding this underneath here. Like that. And then you can take a little piece of paper towel. Once you get enough like off that you can just take and grab it. Now the paper towel helps you grip the silver skin easier. And then you just pull it back. There we go, there. All right, now once you get your fingers under it, you can start just working it back like that. This is kind of tough. This a little bit, takes a little bit of hard work, but trust me, it's worth the effort. If you start running into uh, little areas where you have some stuff that you just want to get rid of, you just take your uh, butchering knife like that and just slide it right under like this and just slice it right back. Just try to be careful not to lose very much meat if, if possible. Uh, one thing I'm noticing with this venison as I'm starting to cut it up is actually um, using the butter knife with the paper towel uh, doesn't seem to be working very well, uh, mainly because it, uh, the silver skin is actually sticking to the venison so much. So uh, what I'm actually having to do is do a little bit with the paper towel as I can and then take the knife, my, um, my sharp knife, and just slide it under a little bit like that and now <clears throat> just try to keep it as shallow as you can so you're not losing very much meat um, the one reason that's the main reason I don't really like to use the knife for doing this because you actually start losing meat but if you're careful 
you don't have to lose too much. See that? See how the silver skin is here, and still, and I have it. I'm taking off here, but I lost a little bit of meat because I'm having to cut it off. But that's okay, because look, I'm keeping it really thin like that. Okay, as you can see here, I've got a vast majority of that yucky silver skin off there. Um, as I start cutting up the meat, I'm going to continue. You just continue to try to get it off as much as you can. Now, you don't need to get every tiny little piece. The, the main thing is that you get just like that big majority of the silver skin off, uh, and, then you, and you're showing the meat like this here. So... Um, what's really nice about this is, is you don't need to be any kind of expert because we're going to take and run the uh, meat through the grinder. So all you really need to do is just go in and start cutting up the meat and just get it into cube shapes so that we can uh, then uh, put it through the grinder like that. And anytime you see something that you don't like, like a piece of yucky silver skin or something, go ahead and just cut it off. And see, that's a, look at that, a nice piece of meat. Now, yeah, look at that. That does not look fancy at all. Um, I am not an expert butcher by any means, uh, but I am just I just going in here and cleaning off whatever nice meat, nice looking meat. You know what a good meat looks like. All right, I'm gonna continue with this. I've actually got uh, more of the uh, more of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up all the pieces, and then I'll be right back with you. Now, <clears throat> one thing I want to show you right here is uh, you see this really dark red blood right here. Um, this is actually uh, a sign of trauma. Uh, in other words, <clears throat> this is where the deer was shot. Uh, and when you start looking around here. Uh, you can find little like little bits of really dark almost black blood like that uh, so you want to go ahead um, you don't want to use uh, the meat that's right around there I mean this meat that's over here I mean this is the way it came it kind of was like nasty looking like this so I'm actually gonna cut away from that and uh, not use that bit of meat right there okay so just keep that in mind all right, as you can see here, I've ended up with about this much usable meat um, when all said and done. So the next step is to go ahead and add some uh, pork fat. Uh, I like to use, this is uh, salt cured uh, bacon. So this is actually uncut. So I'm gonna go ahead, open this up, cube it up. I'm gonna add two packages. Uh, so this much meat to this much bacon. You can add uh, a ratio of about one to four or one to two. So um, one part, uh, one part bacon to four parts deer or one part bacon to uh, two parts deer depends on uh, your taste but this is a pretty good ratio so let's go ahead and uh, start that so go ahead and open up the bacon get this cubed up. Now remember, you don't have to do anything fancy. Oh, looks like uh, this has a little bit of hide on it, so go ahead and get rid of the hide. Go ahead and add it right into your meat. Okay, as you can see, I got the two packets of bacon uh, diced up and put in here. So the next step is to go ahead and add a marinade. Um, now the trick uh, to uh, a marinade is don't overthink it. Um, basically, uh, I, I bought a pre-bought mar marinade here. This is called uh, Uncle June's. Uh, this is a Virginia style barbecue sauce, uh, but I'm gonna use this as a marinade. 
Uh, they have a website if you want to check them out. Um, let's see here. It's www.unclejunes.com. Uh, they have some great stuff on there. Uh, this barbecue sauce makes an amazing, um, makes an amazing uh, marinade. Uh, I highly recommend trying it out. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and open up the marinade bottle. There we go. One thing it says on here is this, <laughs> I just forgot to do before I opened the bottle, it says to shake well. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh. All right. Now, uh, as I said before, uh, when it comes to marinating, don't overthink it. Um, just go ahead and um, start adding it on and uh, until you get a good covering over all the meat. So what you're going to want to do is just kind of pour a little bit in, mix it up like this. Pour a little bit more in. Uh, right now I've got about half the bottle in there and this is total of a uh, this is a 12 ounce bottle there we go go ahead and add uh, about three quarters of the bottle oh, man, a little piece got away from me all right so now uh, the next step is what I want, what I'm going to do is I'm actually, uh, because this meat is really soft and we're going to put it through the grinder. Um, when you put it through the grinder like this, it has a tendency to like get stuck up in there a little bit and gunked up. So what you want to do is go ahead and freeze it all um, for about half an hour to an hour. Uh, that'll just stiffen this up a little bit and uh, it'll make it a lot easier going through the grinder. So I'm going to cover this up, put it in the freezer, and then uh, once it stiffens up a little bit, we'll be back. Okay, so uh, I got the meat in the freezer. Uh, I got the marinade mix, mixed in. And uh, so now uh, I'm going to go out and check the smoker and see what the temperature is out there. So why don't you join me at the smoker? Now, the secret to smoking beef jerky is actually a really good flame control. You, uh, you want to make sure that you have a nice low temperature, about 180 degrees is about the ideal temperature uh, for smoking jerky. So anywhere, really, you could go anywhere from like, say, 160 to just under 200. Uh, I definitely would not go over 200. So uh, right around that 180 degrees uh, temperature is just about the right temperature smoking jerky and it should end up taking about two to four hours so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and check the fire here and see how that looks and uh, I'm gonna put the temperature probe in and see what the temperature looks like okay um, as you can see in here um, I have a much uh, a fairly small flame going uh, and I'm using uh, these are I'm using half chunks of wood I've got some in here that are pre warming uh, so that they light immediately when I put them on the fire uh, so um, this is a much more delicate flame than what I normally have in here so uh, go ahead let's go ahead and check the temperature okay as you can see here uh, I got my uh, temperature probe going currently the uh, outside temperature is 75 degrees uh, and that's because the probe is right here in my hand uh, so let's open up this grill, uh, put it in, and see what the temperature is. Well, as you can see here, the temperature of the smoker is right around 239 degrees, uh, which is clearly too warm. So uh, we're going to go ahead and let that uh, settle down, uh, which is fine, um, because we still have to let the uh, meat freeze up a little bit and run it through the... Uh, grinder and stuff still so this is perfectly okay that we're overshooting right now but when we go to put the meat in we need to make sure it's under that 200 mark all right we're back in at the kitchen now I went ahead and checked the venison uh, it's starting to get a good chill on it it's not firmed up too it's not too um, frozen but it's got a good chill on it so I went ahead and put a, 
a couple sample pieces in the grinder here and uh, it seems to be grinding well so uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and show you how I do that just add uh, a little piece of venison and a little piece of the pork and just grind it up just like this take it nice and slow a little bit goes in and just keep repeating that process until you uh, I'll go through all the meat. Now, <clears throat> one thing you might feel tempted to do and uh, I've been tempted to do this myself, uh, is to go ahead and put a drill on this thing so <laughs> you, uh, uh, you can have a fully automatic uh, meat grinder. However, uh, one of the things it says on the box, it says absolutely do not put a drill on this. So I uh, continue to do it by hand because you know when they have a warning like that, I tend to follow the instructions. <laughs> there we go. Look at, look at that. Nice ground. So I'm going to go ahead and transfer this into another bowl. And uh, as you can see, I've got quite a bit, a little bit more meat here to do. So I'm going to finish this up and then we'll be right back. As you can see here, the uh, meat is now all ground up now and uh, the pork is evenly mixed throughout. Uh, so the next step is to uh, use one of these, uh, basically it's a, it's a jerky gun. Uh, it comes with different tips here. So you just put the jerky inside like this. Oh, pull this back. And then you just put the jerky down, or the meat down inside like this. Now, uh, one thing that uh, people tend to have troubles with these jerky guns a little bit uh, is that they say that they don't really squirt the meat out that well or they just get little itty, itsy bitsy things. Um, one of the reasons why uh, is that the meat might be a little bit too dry. Uh, so uh, that's why I actually put the, uh, put the marinade in the meat uh, as of when I put it in the freezer to cool down. So now this meat is actually nice and moist and it should mold through this fairly easily. So let's uh, go ahead and put this on, put this on, just like that. And this will spin. All right, move this over to the side. And uh, this is just a cooking mat here. And so all you do is just take, just like a caulking gun, Just hold the mat down and squirt the meat out. Now these jerky guns come with different kinds of tips and stuff. Uh, this is just the extra wide one. So just like that. There. Yeah, a little bit of practice and that'll start looking really good. So I'm gonna go ahead, show you one more time. Now, you don't want to pull the jerky gun away. You just want to let it squish the meat out like that and just let it almost push your hand uh, because that will help prevent the meat from splitting apart. As you can see here, I had it a little breaking apart. But that's okay, you can just kind of form it back together a little bit like that. No problem. One of the most important things is, is you want to have your meat at a, a fairly, a fairly even thickness throughout. Uh, that way it'll cook fairly evenly as it goes. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the rest of this and uh, then we'll meet you out at the smoker. 
Okay, uh, I got the uh, jerky all um, squished out. I've got uh, four of these cooking mats just like this um, uh, prepared. And as you can see, the temperature in the smoker is running about 196. So just a little bit under 200. So that's a, a good, temp good starting temperature to go ahead and um, put this on the smoker. So let's uh, get this on. Okay, as you can see, Got the jerky on the smoker, just like that. And let's check the temperature. Come down here, temperature is 164, 162 degrees. Uh, so I'm gonna maintain the temperature right here uh, between 160 uh, and 200, uh, preferably uh, closer to about 180 degrees. Uh, and I'm not even gonna open the lid for two hours, so I'm gonna check check back and just maintain the temperature for two hours and uh, see how it looks then. All right, so I uh, put the jerky on around uh, four o'clock and it is now a little after five o'clock. And uh, so it's been on for an hour. Uh, so I just thought I'd give you a little update. So uh, let's take a look at the flame and the temperature and that and um, see what's going on. All right, as you can see inside the firebox, I'm maintaining this, this very small uh, fire with a little bed of coals like that. And the temperature has been very consistent. Uh, I've actually been ke kept it between 170 and 180 degrees um, very consistently throughout uh, so far. Uh, <clears throat> one thing I'd like to uh, bring you over here and have you notice is as you notice, you don't really see any smoke coming out of the smokestack. Let me back up a little bit here. Maybe you can get a little bit, very faint amount coming out of the smoker. You see that? That's what you want. That's basically the maximum amount of smoke that you want. Because if you have a lot of smoke, you're going to get a real sooty flavor to your jerky. Um, so. Let's, um, I'll show you a couple tricks on how to um, prevent the smoke, too much smoke. Okay, the trick to a, uh, keeping a fire from being too smoky, and it is, a it is getting a little bit smoky right now, is I just have this piece of cardboard, and I give it a little bit of a, a little bit of a wave like this every once in a while. So what, is, what I'm doing here is just giving a little more oxygen to the fire, okay? You don't want to, I tried uh, using a leaf blower one time to do this and I made a huge mess. A whole bunch of ashes went up inside the cooker and it was gag nasty. It was a horrible mistake. Um, <clears throat> so I just take this little piece of cardboard like this. A little bit of wind in there like that. That's all you need. Just enough to give it a little extra oxygen there now step back look you can tell the difference already all right so still maintaining the temperature so i need to shut this door and there we go Ooh, ah. So it is starting to sprinkle outside. So I'm gonna uh, just let this keep going and um, pick back up with you in another hour. Okay, it's been two hours. It's six o'clock and uh, I'm just gonna show you this jerky here. As you can see, let me come over this way so you can, as you can see, it's starting to take a little bit, but you can see the moisture. See, see all that moisture in there? Um, so <clears throat> that's telling me it's still a little bit too moist. You want it to be able to hold together a little easier and we're gonna, we're taking some of that moisture out. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna let it go another hour and see how it goes from there. Okay, let's take a look at this jerky here. All right, one thing when you're looking at the jerky is you wanna make sure that it's cooked throughout. Um, and as you can see, uh, it does look like it's starting to dry out a little bit more. 
uh, which is good. And uh, I, I can, let me pull back a little bit here so you can see what I'm doing. You can actually like pick up the jerky all in one piece and it doesn't fall apart, which is good. And then I'm gonna go ahead and break a little piece off the end of this and show you this. See this here? It's starting to look like it's cooked throughout there. But as you can see here, uh, it's still a little bit, a little bit pink right there. Um, so it's not, it's actually not done. Uh, this little end here is probably about done. I gotta get the lid closed back so as not to lose too much temp temperature. But uh, as you can see here, uh, it's starting to get close. It's getting this little end piece is actually done. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a taste test. All right, see, I got this little piece here, and it's a, oh, mm, mm, mm. Yeah, that tastes really good. So, um, um, I think it's gonna need another, I'm probably gonna need close to another hour, though, to really finish up. So we are, it's seven o'clock now, and uh, so it's been three hours. Uh, so this is gonna be a little bit longer cooked than I anticipated. Um, but that's okay. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and keep holding the temperature and uh, I'll be back with you in another hour. Okay, it is now eight o'clock. It's been four hours. Let's go ahead and take a look at this turkey. Mm, yeah, as you can see, it's really starting to darken up nicely. It's starting to look really nice. Go ahead and take a look inside that little piece off. Oh yeah, that's starting to look really nice. Mmm. It's getting close. I'm gonna let it keep going though. Alright, as you can see the um, jerky is starting to get a nice dark color to it and um, inside is starting to look less and less pink and uh, it's getting dark through the jerky uh, a lot better um, so I'm, you know I think I'm gonna give it another hour so um, we're four hours in so let's go to five hours and see how it is uh, I and I'm actually saying this is not too dried out so uh, I, I feel safe going another hour I actually do uh, feel safe that saying that this is uh, safe to eat now and it's good to eat and so mmm oh yeah that's really good uh, but I think I want to take a little bit more moisture out of it though so um, uh, let's, let's go another hour look at that yummy delicious venison jerky mmm look at the nice dark color on there um, it has been five hours, so it went an hour longer than I expected, which is perfectly okay. I mean, that happens sometimes. So, uh, let's just take a look at that. Look at that nice color. Look at, see how that holds together nicely when you can pick it up. All right, so let's uh, take it inside and do an official taste test. Well, there you go. Yummy, delicious venison jerky. I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you learned a little bit, and I'll see you next time!